Hello and welcome! In today's Lightroom video I'm going to show you how I take this pretty boring, underexposed and pretty bad raw file right here and how I turn it into a photo like this at the end while showing you every single step from the very start to the finished and fully edited picture and I'm going to do all of that in just about 10 to 15 minutes. So first of all, I'm just going to raise the shadows and bring down the highlights both by 100 and that will just give us a very nice dynamic range in both the highlights and the shadow part to work with further. And then I'm actually going to go straight away down to the camera calibration, go to profile and change that. Now what the profile will do is just kind of change your overall color scheme, your whole vibrance and overall look of your picture and it's very very different from photo to photo so I would really suggest you to go through all of these profiles and at the very end stick with whatever you like best. Now in this particular case I think camera landscape works just the best, it really brings out the colors and it makes the whole picture pop and compared to Adobe standard you can see it's quite a bit of a difference. But once again it might be a different profile that works for your picture so just go through all of them and at the end stick with whatever you like best. So now we already have kind of a nice starting base, a lot of shadow as well as a lot of highlight detail and we kind of have our overall general look already set. So then let's go into the color temperature and you might want to just add a lot of warmth because this is sunset picture but even though you can definitely do that it's a pretty boring look and instead of doing that I'm actually gonna go a bit more towards the blues just around probably around 6000 Kelvin works pretty well here and then I'm gonna go down into the split toning highlights go on this little box and just add some warmth here and what this will do is just add color way more in a way more subtle way for example if I would add color or warmth here in the temperature slider it would do that over the entire picture very very similarly and very very evenly whereas the split toning highlights will just add it in the highlight parts and not only of course because it only affects the highlights it adds a lot more differentiation between the highlights and the shadows but also of course the color is coming from the light so it will also work a lot better. So here just go once again to this little box and at the end stick with whatever you like best. You can also go in various different colors. I definitely have made some sunset with some purple colors as well as some light blue colors but I think orange just works the best in this particular case. So in terms of saturation I think around well around 70 actually works pretty well. So now we have a lot of warm tones but at the same time the entire picture isn't just very monotone and very boring. Instead we still have some blue tones and some cool tones in the foreground and that's what I really like here. So then once I've done that let's actually go into the shadows in the split toning. Now shadows don't really have that big of a difference as the highlights because of course naturally the color is coming from the highlights but it can still be worth to try it out and just see if there's anything you like better. So I might even add just a little bit more warmth here in the foreground but really just a hint nowhere near to the saturation as I've done here in the highlights. So here is before any split toning, here is after. It really really worked for this picture and I absolutely love the look. So then after that let's go here into the whites and just bring them up. Now you want to generally press down your old key, just bring them to the right and stop before anything clips and that will just kind of increase your dynamic of the picture a little bit so I really like that. And also the blacks, now the blacks are quite difficult because you can go either into the plus blacks or the minus and it works for different kind of pictures. But because even though this is a sunset picture it does have kind of some stormy clouds so I think going a bit into the minus blacks works quite well here and additionally to that I'm also gonna add just a little bit of contrast to make the whole picture pop even more. 
Alright, so let's finish up with the basic adjustments and I'm gonna go here into the tint, just add a little bit of magenta, really works well here, and go down to the clarity. Now clarity, don't just go into the plus clarity, also see what the minus clarity looks like, because especially in sunset pictures, or for example in these kind of pictures where you really have a ton of texture here in the foreground, it can actually work to simplify your picture and just kind of make the whole mood a bit more dreamy and almost a bit more mysterious as well. So I think around minus 20 clarity works pretty well here. And then the last two sliders we have in the basic adjustments is the environment and saturation. Now both of these will just add saturation to your colors that you have already in your picture, but vibrance will just kind of do it in a more overall way, whereas the saturation really cherry picks kind of the colors a bit more. So generally I would just suggest you to bring it towards the right like crazy and so you can really just see what it does to your picture. And at the end of course go a little bit further down and go for a nice combination of both of these sliders. So in this particular case around 15 into the vibrance and probably around 25 into the saturation works pretty well. So let's just quickly see before any editing and after. As you can see, a huge difference, especially in terms of the colors, but I'm nowhere near done yet. So then let's go into the tonal curve and just bring up the highlights a little bit here. It is very important that you just look at the dynamic, especially in your sky, and not really at the exposure, because you can very easily fix the exposure in the sky with a graduated filter, but the dynamic is really what counts here. So I'm just gonna bring that to around 60, then the other sliders that you have here, very very different from picture to picture and I would really just suggest you to play around with them and at the very end stick with whatever you like best. So here is before any tonal curve adjustments, here is after. As you can see, definitely in the sky it adds a lot more differentiation and dynamic, but at the same time it also makes it kind of too bright. So to fix that, I'm gonna grab a graduated filter, drag it over the sky, and you just wanna make sure that you have a decently soft edge here. And then I'm trying to fix this kind of overexposure by bringing down the exposure. And the thing is, I really like it. So I'm gonna bring it down by around a third of a stop, but at the same time bring up the shadows because I don't want these clouds to get too dark. Here's before that crash rated filter and here's after, definitely fixes the exposure in the sky a lot more. And if I show you now, before any highlights adjustments and after, you can really see this huge difference and it looks so much more dynamic. Keep in mind that this is just a very rough fix for the start and I'm gonna go way more into detail a bit later. Alright, now that we have that done, let's go down here and HSL tool, it does have a difference but I'm not gonna change anything right now. Same with the detail tool, very important if you wanna print your picture and even for online displaying to get the best possible sharpness and crispness out of your picture. But it doesn't really have that big of a difference just for the overall look, so I'm just gonna leave that out for this tutorial. I've made plenty of tutorials where I really explain all of these tools in like 40 minutes and really go in depth with everything. But this video is really just about the more broad adjustments. So then lens corrections, just gonna click on remove chromatic aberration and that will get rid of any of the purple and green fringing that you might see in your picture. And also go to profile and enable profile corrections. So here's before, here's after, looks a lot better. Then effects is uh, one of the last global adjustments and it can really work to add vignetting to your picture. Here I'm just gonna go around minus 25, bring the midpoint more towards the center and also bring the feather to the right so all of the graduation looks very very soft. So if I show you before any vignetting and after, as you can see it really adds so much more it adds so much more mood to your picture and it really makes you focus on the central part. So once again, from before any vignetting and after, really, really love the look here. So then camera calibration, this is the very last global adjustment and as you know, I've already changed the profile at the start, but you also have the primary sliders. 
And what this will do is just change the primary colors of your picture. For example, if you will change the red slider, it will also affect the blues and the greens. So uh, here, once again, just play around with everything and at the end stick with whatever you like best. It's really no set tactic, unfortunately, and it's really, really different from picture to picture. So I'm gonna do that relatively quick. Hopefully I'm not gonna go too far above the 15 minute mark because I really wanna keep this video relatively compact. And I think in terms of the blues, maybe just a little bit to the right works. And in terms of the saturation, maybe a bit into the plus blue saturation. So here is before any camera calibration, both with the profile and also the primary colors. And here is after huge difference and it really makes the picture look so much more unique and interesting. So now that I'm done with all of the global adjustments, I might actually go back to the tonal curve real quick and just bring down the highlights from 60 I've had it previously to around 40 and I just think it works a little bit better, it was a bit too much at first. Alright, so now we have once again all of the global adjustments done, to the left is the raw file and to the right is what we've edited so far. It's definitely looking a lot more interesting, but there are still a lot of fine touches and just some detail adjustments to be done. So first of all, I'm just gonna focus on anything to do with the graduated filter. And as you can see here, the sky from before to after, I do like the colors in the sky, but at the same time, it kind of lost some of its subtlety and of course the very light bluish color. So what I'm actually gonna do is go to this graduated filter that I've added previously, just to kind of go into the minus exposure and equivalent out the exposure a little bit and also now bring down the contrast and the clarity and that will just make it once again a lot more dreamy and I really like that look a lot more than, you know, this very harsh look. So let's just keep it there and grab another graduated filter. This time I'm just gonna drag it over the right, right here. Just wanna make sure that you have a very, very soft gradient and I'm gonna add a different color here because the sky is relatively even. I really want some portions to be with this light blue, but I don't want the entire picture or the entire sky to be this very light blue. That's why I've just added this graduate filter and I'm gonna do that just for a portion of the photo. So let's first of all, just choose the hue. I think something around that works pretty well and then go into the saturation and just choose something that really works here. I think that looks pretty good. And then go back to the graduated filter and just kind of fine tune the alignment. Also go a bit into the magenta with the tint and overall decrease the saturation so it doesn't look as overdone just for a certain part. So let's actually fine tune that a little bit more. Just something like that I think works pretty, pretty well. And now I'm gonna add another graduated filter for the left side, once again with a very soft edge. And this time go into the warm tones. And as you can see, we really have some very nice differentiation in the overall picture. And it's a lot more interesting that way if you just have a certain part very warm and another part to be not as warm and then going into the different color tones. It can really, really work and complexify and make your whole sunset pictures a lot more interesting than just overall very warm. So I do think that works pretty well here. Let's just quickly see... Yeah, in terms of the overall color, I do like this, at least in terms of the graduated filters. I don't think there's too much to be done in terms of the color, but I'm still gonna go just over the top and go a little bit into the minus exposure, and that is just to add additional vignetting on the top to close out the picture. Really, really works. And maybe I'm even gonna go into the color still and just add a little bit of another touch of you know what, maybe a little bit of purple, of course not that much, but just a hint here. It's all about getting as many different and interesting colors in your picture while at the same time not making it look like a rainbow and making it look completely unnatural. So I do think that is a pretty good job here. Maybe I'm gonna grab another graduated folder just for the top here 
and also kind of uh, just decrease the exposure down here to also close out the picture from the bottom. So let's just once again quickly see from the left before any editing and to the right. I really like it, once again, especially in terms of the color in the sky, but I do think there is a little bit more refinement to be done. So now that I just want to do some smaller refinements for the colors, I'm going to grab a rail filter and first of all, want to make sure that your feather is to 100 and that you invert the mask. And then I'm just going to add a rail filter over this part of the picture and I might just go a little bit more into the blue tones and, you know, just make this whole warm part a little bit more interesting in itself and also look a little bit more organic and like it belongs in the picture. So let's just maybe even go with a little bit of purple as well here, really just a hint and with the saturation, something like that. And you know what, maybe even a hint into the minus saturation because I don't want this particular part of the sky to be too saturated. Then I'm going to grab another one just for the right. And as you can see, we do have some nice blue tones, but I still think that maybe an area could be even a lighter blue. So what I'm going to do is go here into the color as well and just add a very light blue tone just like that and also go not quite as much into the saturation and maybe even go into the minus saturation for the overall color and you know just play around with these different looks and at the end just stick with whatever you like best. Of course you can also go into the minus clarity, minus contrast and really get a nice look that way. So I do like that, let's grab another one though and this time just for this area. Now I really like that this is very saturated and very orange but at the same time I think it could be a little bit more refined so I'm gonna go here into the plus whites. That really makes it look a lot more natural whereas you know it's kind of too dark for this very saturated color as it was and maybe a little bit into the minus saturation here just to make it a little bit more natural. So let's just quickly see here, is there anything I want to do else with the rail filters in terms of the color? Maybe just on the top here, another one and kind of add a more bluish tone over there as well. So just something like that should actually work pretty well. And it's really, you know, you have to change the color, the tint and the temperature slider together to really get the best possible look. And it can sometimes be a trial and error of the different tools, but at the end, you will really get the best possible look that way. And I do actually like it really, really a lot. So let's just quickly see once again from before to after. It's a lot of differentiation. It does look natural. And maybe just actually here, another grad, uh, another rail filter, my bad, and go even, well, maybe a bit more into the blues. And that should make it a lot more refined once again. So there's really a ton of things that you can do. Keep in mind, this is just a relatively quick editing video, so I'm not gonna go too much more into detail about it. Instead, I'm just gonna say that I'm done in terms of the color for the sky. And I'm going to go on to the dodge and burning. And actually, before I go into the dodge and burning, which is going to be the last thing I'm going to do to this picture, I'm just going to grab an adjustment brush real quick, go a little bit into the minus exposure and make sure that your feathers to 100, flow is to 100. And then just kind of add some vignetting on these sides right here and also on the left. So let's just quickly see. Yeah, I do like that and I don't think there's anything else needed except for the dodge and burning at the end. So dodge and burning is just making individual parts darker and brighter and I really like to use the rail filter for that because you have a very soft feather. For example, if I show you that here with the feather slider to 100, this very big filter, if I add exposure here, it's really just a center and it's a very, very soft edge and that really makes everything look very natural and really blends in with the rest of the picture. But you could also do it technically with the adjustment brush if you wanted to. 
So I'm gonna go into the plus exposure by quite a lot here, also mix that with a little bit of white and definitely also mix some um, warm tones in there as well. So now that I have this rail filter initially, I just kind of want to look at the picture and look where it is a little bit boring, it is a little bit flat perhaps, and where I could add Dartrum Burning to increase the interest and dynamic of these areas. So first of all, I do think that I'm going to add a filter right here. And you really want to adjust every single one of them, you know, some parts of course need more exposure than others. And that way you can really complexify the lighting. Also you want to also kind of go with the lighting scheme so you don't want to go over the darkest shadows and just increase the exposure like crazy. That of course will not look natural. But if you just do it in a very reasonable way it can have a huge impact in terms of dynamic of your picture and it can make it look so much more interesting as well. So, you know, I was actually thinking about skipping this part, but a lot of you guys really love the Dutch and Burning, so I'm actually just going to show the entire process, even though the video at the end might be around 20 minutes, I'm not quite sure, I do think it's worth to um, show this whole dodge and burning part because it can really have a huge impact to your picture and if you would like to learn more about dodge and burning I've made a completely separate video about that as well where I go a lot more into detail than I just do in this video. So let's add another one over here once again just want to adjust the exposure and all of these sliders according to the filter in the respective area. So I do think that works pretty well, maybe another one over here, right click duplicate and then just add some smaller ones over just some parts here, just so this entire, you know, uh, this kind of darkish part of these, um, I don't know what it's called, but you know what I mean, just to make that a little bit more interesting, make it look at it as if the light would have hit some of these areas, right click duplicate, just bring it to another area like this and go a little bit down into the exposure. Once again, I'm really doing a very fast job. If you would edit a picture for yourself, then you might want to take a little bit more time and really make sure that everything works as good as it can, because it is definitely worth to invest a little bit of time and in exchange to get the best possible look at the end. So I don't think there's too much of dodge and burning to be done anymore. Let's just quickly see before any dodge and burning so far and here is after. That is also with the rail filters in the sky just for the color. But if you just look at the foreground from before to after, it's so much more interesting. And once again, you might want to go back to some of these filters, just go a little bit down if it is a bit too much. But I really, really like the difference from before to after. So then let me think, is there anything else I need to do? Now you can also add minus exposure rail filters and minus exposure dodge and burning, but in this particular picture, you know what, maybe there are a few that could be helpful, for example here in between those kind of brightish parts, just to increase the differentiation, the dynamic and the overall interest of this. Um, of this lighting scheme. So once again, just another one over here. This one doesn't need quite as much of minus exposure as the other one. And maybe another one just like this. So I do think that is pretty much it in terms of the dodge and burning. And in fact, you know what? What I'm actually gonna do is grab a very big rail filter here and just go slightly into the plus exposure. Really not too much though and also grab a bit of a warmish color, just something like that, but really not too much saturation, and then add this or drag it above this uh, very bright part and this very saturated warm part right here and make it look as if that light would have spilled on the entire picture and especially foreground way more than it actually was, but at the same time I don't want to overdo it and still keep it natural. So let's just see real quick before that one rail filter right here and here is after. 
as you can see, it's not the most, you know, the biggest difference in the world, but it definitely helps to blend everything together. And I do think it looks a little bit more interesting. So with that said, I really think I'm done with this picture. Now, even though I've spent around 20, 25 minutes on this edit, it is still relatively quick for a picture like this. You know, you could zoom in, really go into just portions of the clouds or just certain areas of the foreground and really change the color there and the whole exposure and blend everything together way more carefully. But I think for just, you know, to show you the techniques, the overall look at the end, I do think it has worked pretty well. So let's go here into the history and see where we started out with, with the raw file. And this is the raw file, I mean, no comparison whatsoever, completely underexposed in the shadows, the highlights are a little bit too bright, it's boring, it's not much going on, especially in terms of color. And at the end right here, I mean, this is a hugely different picture. And keep in mind, I like to edit my pictures relatively um, severely, so you don't necessarily have to go quite as far into the exposure or vibrance or any of these adjustments I've done here. You can really just go just around half or a quarter of the effect that I've done and still end up with a much more interesting and more diverse overall picture. Of course, also you could bring down the saturation, for example, um, I could go here into the HSL and just bring down the saturation of the yellow and orange tones and that would make it look a little bit more natural and not as overdone. But once again, I really like this very vibrant tone at the end and I think I'm just gonna leave it there. Also keep in mind that if you see the direct comparison from before to after, it's always gonna look very very severe, but at the end if you look at the picture for a few minutes and it doesn't look overdone or oversaturated or anything like that, then there is no need to change. So I hope you found this video helpful, once again it's a relatively compact format, I've done a lot of edits that are like 40, 50, 60 minutes long, where I really go in depth with every single tool and I fine tune everything and I do a lot more than in this particular video. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, be sure to leave any feedback, questions or any suggestions for future episodes, whether it be Lightroom or a Photoshop technique or anything like that, just leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one, other Lightroom, Photoshop tutorials, photography videos and all sorts of different stuff in the future. But anyways, thank you once again very much for watching, have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. Have you ever dreamed of having your very own portfolio website to display your pictures in a professional way to get your work out there and to make it look great, but you didn't really know how to code or how to rent servers, or you don't have the thousands of dollars to hire a coder who will do it for you? Well, what if I would tell you that this website that you see here was entirely built myself without any coding knowledge using SmugMug. SmugMug is the fast and easy way to build your very own website from less than $3 a month. It offers beautiful templates to choose from while still being 100% customizable. It has unlimited storage on any plan so you can upload as many videos and photos as you would like, whether it be a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand or more. It has excellent 24-7 customer support, is used by professional photographers all over the world such as Aliyah Locardi, Trey Ratcliffe, Chris Borkart, Benjamin Van Wang, and once again all of that starts from less than $3 a month. So if you're interested and you would like to share your work in a professional way with your very own website, then be sure to check out the link in the video description and you will get a 14-day free trial so you can try out everything, build your own website without having to commit or to pay anything. And after the 14 days, if you liked everything and you would like to go for a paid plan, you will also get 15% off any subscription by using the link in the video description. So once again, check out the link in the video description in order to get a 14 day free trial and 15% off any paid plan if you then decide to go for one.